That's why we have seasons. That is exactly. Without that, we would have no seasons, yeah. no growing season, Thank no you. harvest. Yeah, nothing. It's so nothing. important to why we're here. So when, so basically, a lot of the winter stuff is associated with the North Pole because of because of that axis, because because the North Pole is the thing that's creating summer and winter. Christmas. If you live in the northern hemisphere, yeah. you've done it again. <laughs> You can come on the secret science with me. I'm just, I'm just sitting next, sitting He's up there. Me. He's up there. Which one? Old Saint Nick. Old Saint Nick. Well, you know, th- who's Old Nick? Uh, well, is it not Saint Nicholas? Old Nick was say- is a name for Satan. Oh, my God. Yeah, the little Nicky. Satan. Yeah, you remember, remember Nicky, the film yeah, Little yeah. Nicky? Mm-hmm. Satan, Satan, Santa, they're all the same one. Satan. <laughs> Oh, no. You're well, gonna ruin Christmas for me, right? No, no, this, this is good. Like, like I said, all these the things. Beginning and the end. Du- the duality. Yeah, duality. On, hey, look, when you see what Father Christmas really brings, Alva, I think you've got <laughs> out already. You'll, you'll, you'll have a merry old Christmas. Right, so let's go through this quite quickly. We've got uh, Death in the top left hand corner on a tarot card, which is, uh, you know, a form of Saturn uh, with his side there. Then uh, underneath that, we've got Baphomet, which is this gold Capricorn part of Saturn. As we discussed, we've got all these animalistic tendencies in the psyche, these instincts. <coughs> That's why Baphomet has a goat's head. Um, and we'll go into the rest of that later. Uh, if we go, there's a guy riding a goat on the top <laughs> layer next to death. That's an early Santa, early Father Christmas. Most Scandinavian, he's riding the, the Yule goat, which is Capricorn. Because at that time of the year, mm. the sun's in Capricorn at Christmas. You know, Jesus was a Capricorn. Yeah. Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. yeah. Looking at the wrong one. So if you look next to him, now under under that little uh, triplicity of zodiac signs, you've got Father Time. We've already discussed why, you know, it's time. Especially it's time for the sun to die at this time of year. So the, that's the main function of time, isn't it? To, to end what began. Else it would just be infinity and everything would carry on forever and you wouldn't be able to distinguish one thing from another. Entropy. Mm. Entropy. So uh, next to Father Time there, we have uh, an old Roman Saturn holding the Ouroboros Serpent, which equally, as we said, is is a is about time. He's also carrying a, a bag of goodies, as it were, the harvest that he's brought down, but it's also what Aquarius carries, the, the these waters, because he rules over Aquarius, the, the spiritual... Uh, things that they'll be, you know, f- foods have a spiritual quality to it. If you the, you need them to live, live it, you know, the, there's there's lots of things going on. Let's not go into it too deep. Um, then we got Father Christmas, who like the sun, which is chopped down at the end of the year, and that cross, which is the the the, the sun's cross chopped down on, which we'll get to, is the tree of life. That is the tree of life that's been cut down. It's the year that's been cut down, and then you bring it into the house to to yeah. to revitalize it. Basically, right. cover it in ornaments, which are, and then put the gifts under it, which is Saturn in Saturn's bag, Santa's mm. bag, which are the gifts of the year. Have you been naughty or nice? Mm. Have 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 you sown and ploughed and mm. done all these other Saturnian, ag- uh, you know, ag- ag- agricultural things, and had a fruitful year? Yeah. So. Uh, the opposite side of that, if we look down to the bottom left again, next to Baphomet, is Krampus. <laughs> <laughs> so Kr- Krampus is essentially the devil, and he is, if you've let go to your instincts, if you've fucked around all year, in all meanings of that phrase, then you get stuck in his bag and he beats the crap out of you with a thorny twig. Mm-hmm. And and it, it's it's the bad part of year. Have you been naughty? Have you been nice? You know, Is that pan? That's Pan next to him. It's the same guy. Yeah. Hey. So Pan playing his Pan pipes there. He's a satyr, isn't he? He's a satyr, as in Saturn. Absolutely. Uh, And these are these teacher guys. But they're teaching. Normally, they've got a raging, um, (laughs) you know, when they're walking around. Because to do with these instincts, fertility, you randy old goat. That's where it's come from. Did he? I like. Well, I'm going to uh, share my knowledge, or maybe incorrect knowledge, but. did he not used to, in ancient Greece, did he not say they used to jump out on mountain paths and make people oh, dead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, ju- they jump on you and they love climbing on you, they climb up mountains. Right, okay. well, the, the, the fact they climb up mountains and climb up trees, mm-hmm. again, you'll ah, find often right, find okay. goats in trees. Yeah. It's the reason why the, the next to uh, the, that, um, that spoke of, of the uh, solstice cross, you know, in the winter solstice, 
that spoke is seen as the tree, the tree of life, the tree ah, of the year. Right, okay. And he, he climbs the tree back again. You know, the year's been ended, but he'll climb that bloody tree. And Capricorns on a psychological level are said to be hardworking, very mm. materialistic, very instinctive. But then we're going to the gods here. Sounds like my dad. Yeah. We'll eat He's anything. A Capricorn. Yeah. Is we'll it? eat anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd eat my tea as well. If I look, it, in my personal experience, having been studying this for a while and, and coming from a scientific background rather, rather than an airy fairy background, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much convinced on the astrology thing. Oh, wow. with, a f- with a few with a few nips and tucks. Uh, yeah. it, it's, I mean, I am a Gemini. I just am. <laughs> you know, and, and o- often when I'm coming into new situations, I'll ask, like, What's, when were they wrong? Do you want the bad days? <laughs> And then I can I can at least have a bit of a buffer. Nine to, I mean, you could say you, you, you're putting on your own prejudice, but I don't think so because I know that that prejudice is there, so I'm trying not to, but it's just so bloody obvious, <laughs> you know, sometimes. Does someone remind me before you go, someone we need to hook you up with before you go, um, as far as uh, his, ter- his dealer. Turk astrology goes. Dave. Not, oh, not right. dealer, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> if he's local, I probably know him. <laughs> <laughs> And then we've got we've got Janus. It looks like to the right of Pan, the double-headed yes. January Janus yep. god. That ahead of me, he's got a key there. He does have it. a key. The key we've already talked about. That's the key to the year. The key to the, the mm-hmm. well, the key to the year is the key to time, isn't it? And the key to the zodiac and all this other stuff. So we know by these four stars that go around us, these four bright stars on the ecliptic, what time of year it is. Uh, next to that is another Roman Saturn there with his. Um, his glaive, his, his scythe, and the harvest of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had death being, you know, harvesting new, but he was a grain god originally. You know, he, he, this is an agricultural society. We're talking about when the first farms and cities developed. And uh, and the, although I'm pretty sure this knowledge was there way before that, it's augmented itself and, you know, become um, in line with whatever culture's going on right now. He's failed to come in line now because... <coughs> You know, people are essentially in the West irreligious. So, um, but but then we find that this it's the psychologists and uh, other people that have tapped into this stuff. Yeah, because in our modern Western way of life, we're completely disconnected from agriculture and the mm. the uh, agrarian society. Mm-hmm. So it's been people like Jung who are who have found this uh, this connection via psychology. That's really That's interesting. Really, yeah. Well, the thing is that because. This art, this secret science, is based on symbols. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's these archetypes of the unconscious, and Jung put it as a collective unconscious. And you'd think, well, that's just distributed around humans, but it, it that's Jung, you know, holding it back just a little, because you know he wasn't very well ex- uh, very well uh, accepted by. M- using this word tonight i've never used it before in my life muggle psychologists <laughs> because they're scared of the woo yes, but yes. but it's not collective unconscious it's fucking universal unconscious yeah uh, yeah i was listening to, sorry did i cut you off uh, yeah i was ju- <laughs> i was just going to use w- one analogy uh and that was that um you know let's take a, an archetype let's say uh a, a masculine one predator let's use the word predator you know what a predator is? It's something that, that mm-hmm. wants to utilize something else that doesn't want to be utilized. There's a hunt going on. There's this very masculine, I'll go and get that thing to it. Well, if there were no humans around, if there was no thought going on, there would be predators and prey. You can't you can't take that out there. Unless you take life away, there's nothing there. But then you could say, well, okay, there's no life there. Do you have any archetypes for, for no life there? Well, you could say destruction. There's been one thing, it's been destroyed and changed. That's an archetype that's going to be there as long as there's matter or energy going through some kind of cycle or whatever it is. As long as there's change, that's an archetype. It's going from a, uh, you could see it as going from a a, a masculine initiatory phase to going to a a feminine phase where that it's drawn to. You know, there's an impulse, a masculine impulse, and it's being drawn by like a, a female magnetic impulse. If you get me. Yeah. Which, funnily enough, we'll get into later, and, and is is part of the secret. Um, so we talked about the tree and this Saturn character uh, being Santa, but then underneath that we've got Adam and Eve, with the tree of life and and death. <coughs> you know, that's what it is: tree of life and death, because mm-hmm. Alpha and Omega. 
And when you look into the Bible, it's uh, the name for God in that is Elohim, which means God and goddesses. El is Saturn. He's the king of the gods. He's the old king of the gods. He's certainly the, the 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 first. And we'll we'll see that we'll, we'll get into this stuff quite quite nicely. But um, if not in this podcast, in the next one, yeah. look for that if you're listening to this. Uh, so uh, we'll see that this this knowledge, this gnosis, all these things wrapped up in this Adam and Eve story are absolutely saturnian and it's saturn keeping them in the limitation that keeps them in the garden of eden and when they break that limitation they, they can they can go away from it but then they've got knowledge what about the serpent the serpent is eve is the unconscious is saturn temptation it's we'll get into it again <laughs> okay we'll get into it we, we don't want to like shoot run the before gun. We come, yeah, well, all don't want to spaff our load. Oh god, spaff mish. <laughs> Why does it always come back to spaffing? Because with it's more fun that way. Yeah, <laughs> I seen you cleaned all the screens of. <laughs> I've, I've wiped down as much as I can. There might be traces here and there. Don't, don't bring use a, a black light. Don't <laughs> use a black light now. So that's not a, a stalactite. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Ryan. I don't know. I, I, do you think we should pause? I don't know. Was, uh, uh, do you feel this is a good place to pause, right? Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. I've got like three more. Yeah. Okay. okay. Three, four more, and we'll, we'll, we'll go. That'll we, be a nice place yeah. to start. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, so I just want to like reiterate a bit further how deep this Saturn winter thing mm-hmm. is buried into your favorite religion of choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here is Jesus at his death. Jesus being. In Capricorn, mm. winter solstice, twenty first to twenty fifth. White dude as well. Yeah, white white <laughs> Jesus. No, there was no Jesus, so it doesn't matter what color he is. All oh, right, okay. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we've got on his left, or oh, the guy with the spear is Longinus. All oh, right, yeah. With his lance, okay. Which we'll come back to later is Semi Lanciata. If right. you know what that is. No. Silicybe semi oh, right. uh, So he has his lance, and then we got Aquarius with a cup. <laughs> it's a cup that looks like a grail. Oh, to drink the old psilocybin. Like no, All right. this one is <laughs> Amanita muscaria. Anyway, don't tell anybody that yet. It's for the next one. So we're, he's getting stabbed in the side. He is Sagittarius, the bowman. And then on the other side is Aquarius. It's usually Saint John with a cup. On on these, you'll see on the right one, he's, he's there with a serpent in a cup. Serpent in a cup. Why is a serpent in a cup? That's weird. Isn't that the symbol for pharmacies around Europe? Caduceus. That's the same thing. We'll see. All these are the same thing. In fact, Jesus there on the cross oh. might as well be the Caduceus. Holy shit! So we can see on each of these. Holy shit! He is Sagittarius going into Capricorn, going into Aquarius. He's yeah. the end and beginning of the year. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Omega, yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, to, back to your Christmas thing. If we look at the one on the right, that's actually Jesus's birth, and Longinus is there as some kind of a poetry. You know, at the beginning, but that's showing you that the end and the beginning are the same thing. Yeah. That you know, Jesus really was born and died on the same day. Uh, you know what I mean? And that looks sort of. I'm taking it that's uh, Renaissance, was it when it was done? Do you yes. Think? The, the 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 one on the left is. These guys painted it. it must have known. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Stuff, you know. Oh yeah, and the, there's a proof that will be later on in the next podcast uh, <laughs> of some underlying geometry at the philosopher's stone. <laughs> which is uh, indicative that you're dealing with a master and that this is esoteric stuff. Because when you visit the interior of the earth, you can rectify the hidden stone, the interior of the earth being the interior of whatever it is. In this case, the geometry underlying the matrix of the painting. Mm. So uh, we'll just quickly go over this. There's um, Odin being speared on the tree of life by his own spear. He said he sacrificed himself to himself with a lance, a psilocybin semilantiata. You're sacrificing yourself to yourself on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so then we've got Jesus being stabbed and having his blood caught in a in a chalice, which is mushroomoid, let's say. I'm, I'm 
heating you up for the next episode, folks. We're not going to go into this too much here. Uh, so we've got uh, Odin on a tree, Jesus on a tree, because that cross is made of wood. And in this example, it's just a tree because it's the tree of life, yep. which is um, to cut it short, and we'll get into it next time anyway, is essentially that band of the Milky Way that goes over your head. Right. And uh, so next to that on the right-hand side is is the tree that represents Dionysus with his cup of ambrosia. Mm-hmm. Ambrosia was the drink of the gods, the nectar of the gods. Mm. And there's a tree there wrapping like a serpent would around a pillar again. And this is when he's died. This is Dionysus dead. And there's a spear, if you can see, mm-hmm. tied to it as well. Going back to it, it's like come up like in the last three podcasts, the uh, Brian Murescu book. About the well, the I was just gonna Dionysus s- mystery cult. I was just gonna say that like, I was listening. I think it was that podcast when I was listening about the rescue book was that Jung. There's like some evidence to say Jung was doing mushrooms as well, basically, and that's why. I got oh, into could it he have figured this shit yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh, th- there's something else I found as well. This geometric pattern, which I found out that Jung had also discovered as well. I don't understand why they they don't let it out though. It's a conundrum. If I end up dead, I'm a very happy person, everybody. If I end up dead, it's somebody from some secret cult come and finish me off. I'm just letting you know this now. Because, I mean, I do want to get... It's not for my own fame or anything. I want to get this stuff out, my own life's work. But there's a reason why this stuff's secret. I could see a pearls before swine kind of reason. Yeah, this I... stuff's dangerous if it's psyche stuff. Mm. I, mm. What I can use to control me, I can control you with. But this this very cultish behavior going on here going back to the the quote of the previous master jesus when he said don't cast pills before swine yeah that maybe there's a reason why this stuff is hidden yeah i haven't figured it though you you don't buy that justification not anymore that might have been okay when the world itself wasn't in peril and and let's be honest the world really isn't it it, the world itself isn't in peril the human (laughs) world is in peril you know there's this ball of mud will su- way survive us don't be silly you know how, f- how, how arrogant mm. uh, however the human world is very and, and it's our psyche that that's wrong you know we, we've lost our connection with nature we've lost our connection with our own unconscious and this is actually in the end a very simple method of regaining that and it just seems to be as well the big secret of the ancients. And it's not just to do with maths and mushrooms. There's something else in there as well. That there's there's uh, an, a, an understanding that's encapsulated in Jesus. Praise be Jesus. And there is a technique thereof. And because of the way that this technique works, there's there's like a glimmer of God in there. Talking for as you said last time, uh, you start, started to become a lapsed atheist. Me too, mate. And it's because this was called gnosis. This is, a lot of this stuff is gnostic, and it's like a f- scientific proof of God, really. And you know those archetypes existing are part of it, mm. and a lot of it's answered by the next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> However, let's just quickly wrap this up. Bottom left, we've got. Uh, Osiris raising the Jed, which is the tree of life, or four pillars, as in those four parts of the Sphinx, four oh, directions. Right, yeah. 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 Um also his backbone, also his phallus. We're getting this phallus backbone, the pillars of, of the the axis of the earth. All these they're all getting intertwined into each other. Mm-hmm. Next to that we've got from Sumeria, we've got Demuzid and Inanna. And he's got a little mushroomoid thing there again and his scepter. And he's popping out from beneath the tree. Mm. Why would a mushroomoid thing be popping yeah. out from beneath the tree? Osiris himself was found at the bottom of a tree. with The tree oh. growing up. And he's willy eaten by a fish. What? You know, <laughs> we'll get into the willy fish later, yeah. especially <laughs> with Jesus. His uh, scepter yeah. is identical to the seven candles that, that, that were floating above Absolutely. the head of... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you yeah. cut it and pasted it. Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little uh, pointer. I wasn't going to point this out, but, uh, and it'll come in, in later in the next episode again. Mm. But if you look on that Jesus in the tree <laughs> and look at his, uh, on our right, the, mm. the right-hand crossbar, mm-hmm. yeah. if you look at the end of that, there's like a little blue oh, yeah. rag 
And the way that that's been bunched together True. is atypical of people hiding mushrooms and things oh. in this stuff. The tree of life itself is mushroom shaped. You can see that down there, uh, you know, just beneath it. In that, there's a serpent wrapped around the, the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And then off to the right of that, again, I've just, just to, to show that we're still in the same realm, is Saturn with a, a coppiced tree and, and a serpent wrapped around that coppiced tree. And the wings are to denote the, the, the flight of time as, as well as his, his, um, and, and his, his status as movement. Because mm. as we said, Aeon is the god of eternity. Eternity doesn't move because it's homogenous. It's all the same thing. It's everything ever at once. Whereas time is everything ever split up into a beginning, a middle, and an end. Limited. Limited. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, with that, gentlemen, I'll just leave you there. There's Moses with 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 a, a serpent on a pole. The Yggdrasil above Moses uh, is the tree of life. Uh, in the center is one of Jung's tree of life with a pole star at the center of it. That one in the top right, that looks like Nordic or something. It is Nordic, yes. Yggdrasil, mm. the tree of life from, from um, wow. Thor and all that lot. Yeah. yeah. The, the gods live on the mountain at the top of the tree. Well, that's in your brain, basically. You're the mountain, top of the tree. The, all these things happen on a galactic level and a personal level. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like the brain stem, isn't it? Coming up the spine yeah, and absolutely then going is that, to the... Yeah. No, this, this whole tradition gets into Kundalini. Mm. The, the Moses with the serpent on a pole... Uh, I, everyone's been bitten by serpents in the desert. Mm -hmm. And Moses says, oh, right, well, take this serpent, raise it on a pole, and you'll all be healed. Again, if you know what Kundalini stuff is, if you know what Chi is, if you know what the Force is, or any of these things, this is all what it's getting at. We all have this one shared tradition. Uh, same too, we've got two serpents wrapped around a tree. You know, the serpent's the nervous system wrapped around a tree, the Ouroboros serpent feeding itself like the phoenix would. So you could have a bird in the tree. Underneath that, we've got it from alchemy again. We've got seven planets, which I'll tell you now for next time, are seven serpents around this tree. And, you know, what can I say? Seven, it's the, uh, the, the what, the triad and the tetrad, isn't it? That's the, another of the importance Check of seven. Yes, got the, it is, The yes. triad. And the tetrad, mm -hmm. and they come together to make unity. One, it does. Yeah. In the church, hmm? well, the, 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 the triad is logic, grammar, yeah, grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and uh, the quadrivium, as they call it, is uh, maths, geometry, music, and astronomy. Mm -hmm. That's how the Greeks sort of described it, isn't it? The ancient yeah. Greeks and the, the Romans, the, yeah, the and seven. The, Sciences. That's a classical yeah. education. When they say you get a classical education, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the, the Trinity is a processing, how to process, and then the four. four. Well, really, saying the Holy Trinity and the four elements is what it is. That's exactly what it is. Wow. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so just oh. really quickly on this one, we'll go over this next time, but um, there's a Christmas tree top left with its star point at the pole. The tinsel is a serpent going up it. The, the, the <laughs> stars are the baubles. Um, which is essentially an axis Monday, an axis of the earth, which is a representation of, yes, the axis of the earth, but also you. You are an axis Monday. You are, a, you know, a connection between the earth and the heavens. You know, there's nothing above your head apart from sky. That this same axis is this Cairo, this PX cross that's famous with the Alpha and Omega <coughs> that stands for time. It stands for the year because, of course, the, the, the heavens whirl around our head. And um, we'll not do it now, but um, we'll, we'll go into, you know, it'd be a good place to start this because, you know, that, that PX, different things on there do actually mean real things. And it wasn't only used by us, but there's, there's an example there that that uh, tile row in the middle is Mayan. Wow. So, you know. It, so they had this in South America. They had this all over the world. And this is why I believe it's the Prisca Theologia, because from Buddhism to Zoroastrianism to the Mayan and Aztec religions, it just decodes them all. And it suggests a progenitor. That's yeah, the thing. This, isn't the, it? Yeah. this yeah. is the thing, you know. Yeah. We, we and it, it's just, it's like a technique. Yeah. It's like a technique. And the beauty of the symbology is that it isn't bound by linguistics or, mm. you know, it's something that people can understand and make these connections yeah. via yeah. the use w of symbols. You know? With a little context. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, with a little, yeah. And, and some, the basic, look, fr from, you know the 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 
often this stuff's called magic. It's cer- certainly what magicians were doing. You know, they will you think of a magician's coat with his with his pointy hat there, and it's covered in stars. Well, he's looking at the stars, and the pointy mm-hmm. hat's the this whole aligning yourself with mm-hmm. the pole star thing. And what do magicians do? Well, they do magic. They have this special power, the force that they use. So, believe it or not, that's in there too. So mm-hmm. I'll give you that secret. <laughs> it's like magi- that's quite well known. Magicians, where's it come from? Magi. Magi. Great yeah. one. The adoration yeah. of the Magi. The yeah. three wise, wise men. Wise men. Who were Zoroastrian astrologers. Following a star. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I fucking love it. I yep. just, yeah. Uh, I just don't know how you do it. It's no, y- I can't believe how <laughs> much you've put together. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Not, even yeah. got, not even got there yet. But no. I can't wait for I think this two. is going to have to be a triptych. It might be. It's going to have to be a trilogy. Yeah, just sit, see how it might be a goes. tetrad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a triad. Yeah. Yeah. Tripod. Well, we're going to uh, we're going to take a deep breath and yeah. soak all that in. And uh, thanks for coming, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. I've I've actually really enjoyed seeing your faces and <laughs> no, knowing that without trying, I remembered all your names. Yeah, you did. Ah, boom. Yeah. It's great. Uh, <laughs> myself down there sorry don't forget to check out the links um, and watch Ryan's videos they're really like informative mm. educational light hearted they're great go yeah. and watch them oh cheers bro <laughs> alright and um, we'll catch you on the flip side don't touch that dial yeah we're gonna do a quick bit of yeah. news deconstruction yeah very rapid yeah rapid rapido rapido right see you next time bye bye, bye. bye. The dwarf, the cripple, and the mother of madness.